Hey, I'm Big Lou and welcome to Big Lou Barbecue. And today I'm going to do something I have never done before. If you saw the title, we're going to make mozzarella cheese. And I've never made mozzarella cheese. So if you were looking for an expert video on how to make mozzarella cheese, this isn't it. However, if you are watching this, I'm going to tell you that our mozzarella cheese came out pretty good because if it comes out bad, you're never going to see this. And, um, but what you may learn from watching me do it for the first time is mistakes to avoid. I don't know. I'm going to be following it. What I'm going to do is convert this gallon of milk into a pound of mozzarella cheese. And we're going to be using this cheese kit. Now, this is my daughter, Hannah. I have spent a lot of money over the years, ever since she was a little bitty tiny girl, buying little string mozzarella <laughs> cheese sit sticks. And... Um, these little string mozzarella cheese sticks. She Yay. loves them now, she loves them then. She loves fried mozzarella cheese sticks. This child loves mozzarella cheese. So she's gonna be helping me. This is I'm my assistant Hannah. She's enthusiast. This is my assistant Hannah, so say hello, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. I said hello, <laughs> Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Okay, anyway, see, it's a cheesy joke because we're making cheese. Using this kit from Cultures for Health. It's supposed to have all kind of cool stuff in here. It's got butter muslin, which I have found out in the past week that butter muslin is cheesecloth that's finer than normal cheesecloth. Normal cheesecloth um, strains cheese, but it won't strain butter. Butter muslin is finer, and it'll strain butter, but you can use it for cheese. So we've got this, okay? I don't know why they don't call it butter cloth. But it says fine weave cheesecloth. Anyway, that's what makes it butter muslin instead of plain cheesecloth. We've got citric acid. How they take this out of oranges or lemons or something. I don't know. I like salt. Yep. We got cheese salt. I like cheese. I like salt. I have no idea why. it said. You know what it says on the cheese salt? You know what it says right here? Check this out. Kosher salt. What's the ingredients right there? Kosher salt. Kosher salt. That's all that's in here. Kosher salt. But we're going to call it cheese salt because that makes it sound fancier. All right. We got instructions that we're going to follow. Sure? We have a thermometer that we're going to use, and we have these little rennet tablets. I thought they were indigestion pills in case your cheese goes rancid, but anyway, they're uh, rennet tablets, and we're supposed to be able to cut these into quarters. Anyway, we've never done this before. We're going to try it and uh, see how this uh, mozzarella cheese comes out, and evidently I'm supposed to be able to make several batches and save a lot of money on buying those pre-wrapped string cheeses, and um, so... Stay tuned, Big Blue Barbecue. It's a cheese my, experiment. My daughter Hannah and us are going to make homemade mozzarella cheese for the first time ever. Big Blue Barbecue. Okay, it says um, dissolve a quarter rennet tablet in a quarter cup of water. So I've got a quarter cup of water, and what I don't yet have is a quarter rennet tablet. Comes in these little packages like this, like medicine. So I'm gonna. Um, Kind of just cut it open and then try to cut it into quarters. All right. And it says you're supposed to save the other three quarters for making more cheese. So let's see what I do to cut. Uh oh. oh. That wasn't good. Don't know where it went. See if we can find it. I don't know. It doesn't cut into quarters very well. It says you're supposed to save the rest in the freezer, but it looks like I lost the rest. So maybe that's a quarter. I don't want to have, I don't know. A lot of people I saw on YouTube use liquid rennet. It seems like a better idea. So we're going to put plop, plop. And it doesn't, nope, I just dropped them in there. And you can see plop, plop, and it doesn't fizz, fizz. It just kind of just sits there. It don't bubble. It don't sparkle. It just kind of lays there. It's bubbling a little bit. That's an old Good Times reference, if y'all remember JJ. Okay, well, after totally messing up cutting a tablet into quarters, and letting it dissolve into this right here to be liquid rennet. We're now going to do the next prep step, which is add, what, a quarter teaspoon of citric, citric acid. acid. Citric acid, uh, there's the camera. Citric acid <laughs> into this cup of water right here. So I'm gonna let Hannah do that. Oh, gosh. All right, get a quarter teaspoon of citric acid and put it in the, no. In, no? Just dip the spoon in there. Oh, duh. Level spoon, that's good enough. All right, so we're gonna let the citric acid dissolve. So we got the rennet, oh. 
And we got the citric acid. Good job, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't go all over the floor like the rennet tablet. All right, let's go to the next step, Big Lou Barbecue. Step three, add one gallon of milk to the pot. You're supposed to pour the mixture into the large pot in step two. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm supposed to pour the citric acid mixture into the large pot? Yep. Oh, well, that was step two. Sorry about that. Missed that part. So we're going to do it now. Like I said, this is first time for everything. So now I'm going to pour the citric acid mixture into the pot with a gallon of milk. <laughs> and that's supposed to help the curd separate from the whey. All right, I hope little Miss Muffet doesn't join us, and I sure hope a spider doesn't sit down beside her because Hannah is deathly afraid of spiders. But we're going to separate the curds from the whey. Okay, it says that once we do this, we turn the heat on. I've got it on medium heat. It doesn't say what heat to do it. It just says um, stir vigorously like that with a slotted spoon like this. Okay, and by the way, it says do not use aluminum equipment. It says you can use, uh, it says you can use stainless steel equipment, you know. All right, um, stir vigorously with the slotted spoon while heating the milk to uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, and only 88 if you're using like raw milk, like if you got your own cow or something. All right, we don't have a cow, so we had to go to the grocery store. All right, and so I'm just gonna continue to stir this until this gets to 90. Right now, it is saying it's at 60. All right, so I'll come back and show you what it looks like at 90. Okay, I've been stirring this vigorously, and the thermometer says it's at 90 degrees. So I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna move it to a trivet, and then I'm gonna reset the camera and uh, show you what we do next. All right, step four. Take the pot off the burner, slowly stir in the rennet, with an up and down motion of the slotted spoon for approximately 30 seconds. All right. Here's the dissolved rennet. It didn't pop, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. We're going to um, make an up and down motion, I guess, like this. And we're going to count the 30. It says, uh, step five, cover the pot and let it sit undisturbed for five minutes using raw milk let it sit for 10 okay, minutes. Okay, five minutes is up and it says to check the curd at this point. It should look like custard with a clear separation between the curd, the solid, and the whey, the liquid. If the curd is too soft or the whey is too milky, let it sit for a few minutes more. Well, since this is um, the first time I've ever done this, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. I watched some videos on it and I think I know, but let's see. Do we see the curd separating? I don't see any curd at all. I don't see any curd at all. It's got to wait a little longer. Maybe you got to heat it some more. And like I said, this it's is not... It's five to ten minutes, so... Let's wait another five minutes on it. Okay, well, it was supposed to be five minutes. And it wasn't set after five minutes, so we let it go another five minutes, and it still wasn't set. So I rechecked the directions. And what had happened was, uh, when my daughter, lovely Hannah here, she was supposed to put one and a half teaspoons of citric acid into the cup of water, and she only put a quarter teaspoon of citric acid in the cup of water, and the curd was therefore not forming. So I went back, checked the directions, and I added another one and one quarter teaspoon of citric acid. We've waited another five minutes, and as you can see, um, the curd is formed or almost formed, and it says you're supposed to cut the curd, not the cheese. You wouldn't want to cut the cheese in the kitchen. That would just be rude. Now, it does not, the directions does not tell you how to cut it. It just says, cut the curd with a knife that reaches to the bottom of the pot. It does say. And when I first read this, um, I didn't know if it's supposed to cut it once or whatever, but I watched videos online and they go through it like this. Now this is looking a little more like a ricotta cheese or a cottage cheese, I think because we didn't have that citric acid in it when we heated it all up, but we're gonna to try to make what we can out of this and see if it will work, all right? So it's cut and broken, and you can see that the curd 
is uh, forming. So, and you got the yellow way there, and you've got this curd. So we're gonna go to the next step. What were you gonna say, darling? Oh, it said that if you do it too early, it could mess up later, but I think this is fine. Do what too early? Cut the curd. Well, we've been waiting 15 minutes. So we're gonna have to try it. And if it comes out too bad, nobody's gonna see this anyway, so. Yeah. All right, put the pot back on the stove and slowly heat it while stirring the curd with the slotted spoon. So I'm gonna reset and put this back on the stove. Okay, it says um, put back on the stove and heat slowly until it reaches 110 degrees if you use pasteurized milk, which is what we're doing. You've got different temperatures, 90 for raw milk and 105 if you're using a microwave to stretch the curd, which we'll be doing later. And so I'm supposed to um, heat while stirring the curd with a slotted spoon. All right, where is the thermometer? Right there. The thermometer. Who is it that I watch on YouTube that does thermometer? Oh, one of them. All right, oh wow, it's still saying this is up near uh, 90 degrees. That's not too bad. It hadn't cooled off that much. Wow. Cast iron pot. But it's not supposed to, it's supposed to be, the curd's supposed to be, not supposed to be so grainy. It's not supposed to be so grainy. But we're going to make what we can make out of it, and next time we'll do it better. We'll follow the instructions right. That's what we'll do. Okay, it's at 110. And so I'm going to um, turn the burner off. We're going to move it back over here. It says take it off the burner. I'm going to reset the camera, and we'll be right back with you. Okay. It says now at this point to stir it for, what does it say, Tana? Two to three minutes? Two to five. Two to five minutes. It says the more I stir it, the more solid the curd is. Is that what it says? I don't need the thermometer at this point. What does it say? Read the instructions the more, correctly. The more I stir, stir the more solid it will get. The more I stir, the more solid it will get. More stirring will make a firmer cheese. Is the well, with curd like that, we're going to need a firmer cheese, I guess. Okay, I've been stirring it for a few minutes. I'm going to use this thing here to get the curds out. Let them drain from the whey. And I'm going to put them into this colander that I've lined with the cheesecloth. Now, it doesn't say I have to use a cheesecloth. It says use a colander, but it also says use a stainless steel colander. And all I have is an aluminum. And it says don't use aluminum. So I've got the cheesecloth here, and that's what we're going to do. And that's looking better than I thought it would. Looking much better than I thought it would. So I'm going to dump all, you see it's draining out. And it looks like that right there. Got the colander on the bottom, a bowl on the bottom of the colander. And we're going to dump all of these curds into this cheesecloth. Where's the water heating to, Hannah? 140, we still got a little ways on the water. The curds, I think, are supposed to be more solid. The videos I watched showed them being more solid than this ricotta looking, uh, not ricotta, um, cottage, cheese. cottage cheese looking kind of curd. It's still cheese. I right, want to do this. And it's a little bit more. All right, next time we add the citric acid when we're supposed to, all yeah. the citric acid when we're supposed to, I think we'll have a better product. Next time we'll just do the right math. <laughs> you know. So like I said, a video on how not. All right, so what I'm doing now is taking this uh, cheesecloth and pressing the uh, rest of the whey and the water out of it. And it is kind of coming together, so that's better than what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, we're having fun though, right? Yeah. How to that. slightly revive your cheese making It may be, be a very crumbly, it may be more like queso fresco, uh, which queso is that fresco Mexican good. crumbly cheese, you know? That's what it kind of feels like at this point. Um, queso fresco, uh, which is Spanish for probably for fresh cheese, but uh, we're not doing Spanish. We're doing mozzarella, some Italian cheese. So I don't know, let's see if we can get that folded in there again. All right, where's my water? I see steam. I see steam. It's well, it's, not it's be quite at 170 yet. It's getting there, huh? It's getting there. All right, see, there's still some 
weight. I don't know if you can see it, but there's still some weight coming out of that. And that's what I'm trying to get all the way out of this curd. Okay, we got the water to 185. And um, what I did was I took this and I squeezed out any more whey. And so all the curd is inside this muslin right there. Can you see that? And we're gonna dip it in here. And um, how long do we leave it in here? Uh, until it becomes stretchy. Uh, it says dip it kind of in and out, or dip it multiple Dip it times. in and out it until it becomes time. stretchy. It said they, uh, they'll start being stretchy when the uh, curd actually reach like 160 degrees. When the curd reaches 160 degrees. Okay, put the thermometer there in the curd part and we'll see what we can do. Is it in there? I don't know if it's in the... Uh, it is kind of melting together, which is encouraging because we almost messed this up. But we salvaged it, I think. Okay, we're at 170. So I'm gonna get this cheese off of here. It does seem to be uh, kind of melty, so I think I'm supposed to do this with it, I think. It's a little bit warm. Ooh, that's hot. So I got gloves on now, but that doesn't uh, stop it from... And I go back to the colander. Is that what it says, Hannah? Uh, well, it says, like, Move the curds from the colander and stretch them like in my way. Know. Look at that, the way in my way. Get out my way, way. Move. Move the way out the way. Put this right here. Ooh, another cheesy joke. He said, move the way out the way. Now I'm gonna grab this and um, separate it from the cloth. It's kind of glued to the cloth. I've matched it in there pretty good. Okay, see if we can hand me some more, um, some more out of there, please. Let's yeah. get it all out of this. Oh, cup. out of here. Just hand yes. it to you. Yes. Yeah, pick it up and hand it to me as I stretch, as I yeah, pat this together. Like <laughs> Come on. You can use your hand. It's just it's a not too stretch hot. like chaffy. It's not so too hot. Yeah, not there's very... some big pieces right there, huh? It's not very. Uh... Specific. Well, we're going to stretch it, but I'm um, you see it's starting to stretch. It's good. All it's right. good. Did you get out, everything out of the? There's right. a big chunk right here. Yeah, we need that. We need as much cheese as we can have. Man. I like cheese. I know, but it didn't make a valid. Oh. Oh. Not too, attacking yourself. Not too, too aggressively. And so what I'm doing now is just kind of stretching it like this. And uh, it's actually, I think it's gonna be pretty good. It's, it's working out anyway. Uh, it's not an expert deal. All right, did we get it all out of the muslin cloth? Stretch the muslin cloth out and see if we can get any more. Here, like Play-Doh. Yeah, Play -Doh. Like Play-Doh, all right. Now, get out of there. This thing is get in big. here. Yeah, you can set that back in the pot, I think, at this point. All right, we need the salt. Get the cheese salt. Right Get on. the cheese salt. Mm -hmm. All right, I think you're supposed to put a tablespoon. We'll read the instructions carefully and put what's supposed to be in there in there. Okay. Here's your nuts. Just usually return them to the pot. At this point, add cheese salt if desired. I'm stretching it. Okay, I think it does not say how much. It just says add cheese salt if desired. Not even as desired. Let's go with a quarter teaspoon. Oh, this is kind of cool, man. It's actually like, like Silly Putty. I wonder if it'll pick up pictures out of the newspaper comic strips. Oh, look at that. That is, it's going to work. 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 All right, my camera was shaking. I'm sorry. It's going to work. It says you want to stretch it until it's soft and shiny. And it's we don't have a full pound, like it said, but I think that was our fault. Not the instructions fault. It was my fault. All right, put the salt in there. All right. Nice. Ah. That's good enough. We can get it all. It. Put a little bit more salt right here. We want salty cheese. And a little more salt right there. Smear that all around. Move it in here. Some more curds in there. The more you work the cheese, the firmer it will be. The more I work the cheese, the firmer it will be. Good. Because um, 
This stuff was bad. All right, move that out the way. There's cheese everywhere. Nope. Cheese everywhere, huh? That's a good thing, though. That's a good thing. Maybe I better put it back over this this bowl. The counter has gotten very, very messy during this process. Messy's fun. Stretch, stretch. Oops, I dropped some on the water there. All right. All right, I think I'm supposed to mold it up now, so we'll go to that next step. Big Lou Barbecue. Okay, um, back now. What I did, because it wasn't staying together, is a little cheap tip in the instruction books to say heat it in the microwave for 30 seconds. So it's hot again, and I've uh, heated it in the microwave for 30 seconds. It's hot again, and I'm re-stretching it with all that salt, and I think I'm going to be able to form it into... Um, a cheese taco. No, not a cheese taco. I want to do like just a big log. Sure. I don't know. It says be creative. Logs aren't be creative. Logs aren't creative? Logs aren't creative. Well, I don't have like a mold for it or anything. All right, balls? Everyone. Yeah, it's working more like cheese now. It was kind of falling apart. This is working that looks better. Looks fun. Looks fun. Like playing with play doh or something. Is that what they mean by stretching it? I guess so. I mean, I've never stretched taffy before. Oh, well, you want to try and have fun with a piece? Yeah, I'm sticking to the plate, so we better. Do I need gloves? Alright, what am I supposed to do with the wa ice water, honey? Uh, put it in there, it's supposed to let it cool. Put it in here and it's supposed to let it cool? Yeah. Right, let's get it in balls. It says, it. leave it for 15 minutes, then put it in the bowl of uh, frozen, like, well, the, wa the, the water from the freezer. Alright. This cooling stuff is important to keep the cheese from becoming grainy. Well, I think we've already done that. <laughs> Alright, we're going. I've dropped them in cold water. It's been in the refrigerator for about 40 minutes and we'll see what happens. How long do they stay in the water? 15 okay, minutes. I took after the uh, balls were dumped into the refrigerated water we put it in ice water as you saw they stayed in there several minutes we took them out I dried them off with a paper towel and it is time to slice the cheese. We're not going to cut the cheese in the kitchen that would just be rude. Let's see if it slices. Now we did make some mistakes with this okay uh, with not enough citric acid at first, but I think we salvaged it. Okay, I'm gonna let Hannah, you wanna be, um, tell us what that piece tastes like? Let my wife. Small. A small huh? piece? Yes. Here you go. Shannon's gonna tell us what this it tastes is like. good, it tastes like mozzarella. Does it taste like mozzarella? Yeah. We salvaged it. Look at that, see it? It came out anyway, even though we didn't have the citric acid right at first, when we made a mistake, we were able to salvage it. Had a lot of fun with my daughter making um, mozzarella cheese. I think it's supposed to render a little bit more than this. It's supposed to be able to get a, about a pound from a gallon of milk. And um, let me try it. Oh, that's really good. Like the, um, they can save money on those cheese sticks. Next time I'll shape it into sticks and put it into little wrappers and, and then I don't have to buy the cheese, mozzarella cheese sticks. Now with soda crackers. You want some more, Shannon? A very small slice. A very small slice. I think I like it better without the cracker. Okay, Hannah, did you have fun? Yes, I had a lot of fun. So you had fun, Hannah. I had fun, Hannah. All right, so just another cheesy joke. Hey, it actually came out really good. Um, here's a piece. We think we should have added a little bit more salt. We certainly certainly should have put the citric acid in correctly and read the instructions correctly at the begin with. But it came out great. Oh we'll be making more of this. You can look forward to fresh made mozzarella on top of burgers and pizza. Pizza and all kinds of things on Big Lou Barbecue. Hannah, I had fun. Thank you, darling. Thank you, Daddy. Love this young lady. Big Lou Barbecue.